If you grew up around the internet around the time I did, it was common knowledge that compared to Google, Reddit in many cases was a better source of really good information on even the most niche of topics, just because it was all sourced from subject matter experts that had been vetted by communities that came about dynamically or organically on Reddit. For me, this was mostly build a PC and overclocking subreddits, but this applies to so many other topics, like homebrewing and all kinds of things. And although maybe in 2024, the quality of Reddit has changed and the kind of people who use it has also changed, but what's interesting is it's a lot of really great data. And since Reddit is considering doing an IPO, What's really interesting is one of the bigger deal points is that Reddit's value is implicitly tied to having this huge corpus of relatively clean data that we know is generated by humans. And going forward on the internet, it's going to get harder and harder to understand how this works. And just given how Reddit is structured with subreddits that loosely correlate to communities that are loosely linked to specific topics, it's actually pre-structured data that's pretty easy to use to fine tune. And for the longest time, this was all publicly available and pretty cheap to actually aggregate into data you could feed into a language model. So what's happened here is Pietro Sherano, who is a developer we've covered before, decided to take a lot of this data and actually train and fine tune knows Mixtral 8x7b, initially from Mixtral AI, on all this data. And it's important to note that he only picked a few different subreddits. Obviously, you could pick all of the subreddits, but then there'd be a question of what is the model actually good at. So to name a few that he did pick, he picked subreddits like Ask Academia, Ask Computer Science, Ask Economics, and Explain Like I'm Five. There are a few more lapped in there, but the idea is to give this model some utility. And in total, this legendary fine-tuned model was tuned on around 10,000 Reddit threads. So 10,000 conversations about certain specific things across a number of subreddits. And the question is, how good was it? Did it actually work? Was the insight it provided better than the base Mistral model? We'll have to kind of find out here. I want to go over all of this in this video. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. Another really curious attribute of this is all of this fine tuning was actually done on an Apple M3 CPU using MLX. So right out of the bat, this model can run on an M3 Max Apple Silicon CPU. And it used just about 9,000 iterations. And you can actually try it out right now on Hugging Face as part of the MLX community. And I should also mention that Technium and Euclase were both also contributors to this model. And this has also resulted in a data set now that is freely available for everyone called Reddit Instruct Curated. So the idea of picking these subreddits loosely had to do with the fact that you could actually build Instruct data sets out of them. And the sample output's pretty good. It's also not really as censored as you'd think, even though Reddit has kind of clamped down on this going forward. So right here is the system prompt, which says you are a fun and helpful assistant. Then the question, explain like I'm five, quantum mechanics without using the word quantum, computer, bit, or algorithm. So basically we have sort of a positive and negative prompt here along with the system prompt. And clearly here it says, okay, let's explain quantum mechanics more simply. So it understood the question and understood that since the prompted explain like I'm five term was, it was in here that uh, it should probably draw on data it knew from the explain like I'm five subreddit. So it goes on to say, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, Quantum mechanics is a science that helps us understand how things behave at a very small scale, smaller than what we can see with the naked eye. It's like trying to understand how everything works in a miniature world. And then goes into a number of examples, which is pretty cool. And what's also interesting here, and this is one thing I really like to do with Mixtral, is you can use instruct prompts and along with relatively basic system prompts, and it will actually give you something that is more established in English prose and sentences as opposed to bullet points. In my opinion, bullet points are a way that a lot of these models cheat by having to leave out a lot of um, their thought process or actually explaining what they mean. So, so spitting out facts will always have less value than having kind of a progression of facts that you can link together in a greater idea or the idea of like starting with a small example and then slowly getting more complex, which is what I think this fine tuned mixtral is quite good at. Pietro then says here, if you're interested in learning more about fine tuning models locally, consider following him. I follow him, you should follow him. And he's actually going to have a tutorial on this coming out soon. And as you guys know, I don't make a ton of tutorials because uh, it takes a lot of time and they just, their value degrades in mere weeks. So I will certainly link to his tutorial once it's out. There are also a number of other good ones, but Pietro creates exceptionally good content. What's also cool is 
He's also given some advice on how to use MLX. It's really cool to start to see a lot of pretty innovative fine tuning and not just basic fine tuning happening purely on Apple MLX, which again leans into Apple's massive foray quietly into AI tooling and how we might see some of this start to bleed into the Apple Vision Pro stuff. Obviously, a lot of the Apple Vision Pro is more tied to uh, taking speech and turning it into text and using models that are visually capable that can understand what's around them, whether it's segmentation or understanding depth. But it is cool to see that you can just do this on you know, a MacBook. And the Hugging Face page is pretty down to earth. It's also pretty much to say, yeah, you can write it with MLX. What's also cool is if you guys didn't know, if you're on Apple Silicon, uh, using MLX is as simple as just running pip install MLX and then loading up the model and you're off to the races. And it is important to note that this model was converted to the MLX format from this original four bit quantization of uh, Mistral 8x7b DPO four bit which was based on the, uh, the NOS Hermes release of this that we talked about earlier in January. So I'm still waiting on an M3 MacBook to show up so I can kind of play with this on my own. I'm curious if you guys have Apple Silicon, if you're doing most of your development on Apple Silicon, and just kind of what you think. Uh, I know Reddit is probably on the downturn to most people. I think the relative intelligence of Reddit has gone down slightly. I definitely more so look to Twitter now for interesting information. And I think that the target audience of Reddit, just since it's bigger, is now different. But there are still some subreddits that are lightning focused and provide a ton of value. Uh, the Olama subreddit is one of those. The Stable Diffusion subreddit is another. And I do think there's still a lot of value there as a data set. And again, it's kind of cool because with the upcoming IPO, given the challenges around Reddit as a platform, most of, I think they're like $8 billion valuation, at least a billion dollars of that, is just to have Reddit as a corpus of information to train on. And what's cool with platforms that have also done this, like Twitter or X, we know that Grok has also vastly benefited from a relatively open and meaningful data set. And what's interesting is there are strong kind of carryover, is that there's strong similarities in the effects that uh, RLHF, or Real Life Human Feedback, and censorship on these platforms have when you apply them to data sets. When you just think of the information on Reddit or on X as basically a large text corpus. And when you apply censorship, you make it hard for you know, LLMs or, or, or people training on this data to actually understand why certain things are less common or why certain things are just removed. And it's another great example of why we should reasonably censor online content, but not censor it to the point that there are implicit political biases or implicit biases uh, just at a platform level, because it really takes away from the ultimate value of these, which is just the information stored in them and what we can do with them. And going forward, the way we're gonna access this is not search, it's LLMs. And I largely believe LLMs will replace kind of the mental model of I'd like to search for X and more so the LLM will provide you with a summary of 12 different people who kind of said what you were looking at and then provide sources. So if you wanna look further, you can further validate, which is actually kind of how Gemini and Bard already work. So please like and subscribe if you like this content and you learned something. We really like making videos about this and we'll see you in the next one.